You're watching Friday Night Heights, presented by Bell. Welcome inside the Stegman Coliseum here on the campus of the University of Georgia for tonight's live SEC ESPN coverage at the 15th ranked Georgia Gym Dogs. Welcome the number two LSU Tigers. And when you talk about the Tigers, this is a team on the roll. This is their seventh, third meet in seven days. And look at the score. The last two meets over 198 plus for the first time in school history. And Bar Connor along with Kathy Johnson Clark excited for this competition tonight because look at that score on bars for LSU last week 49 725. Just unreal, Kathy. And Bart, as the visiting team, uneven bars will be the first event we see them on. Last competition, they were on fire. They dialed in so many stuck landings. I think they all got to be stick queen for the day, one right after the other. They are undefeated in the SEC this year at 5-0, 11-1 on the season. And there is Jay Clark, who is the associate head coach, giving some final tips as they set to go on the uneven bars here. Jay Clark, of course, the associate head coach at LSU, but he was formerly the coach here at Georgia. Vault lineup for Georgia as the home team. They get the Olympic order. That means Sabrina Vega will go first. And you'll notice there, they have just five vaulters in the lineup. And Kathy, that has been the theme this year for the Georgia Gym Dogs. Very talented, but not a lot of depth. They only have five gymnasts who are healthy enough to perform the leg events, vault and floor exercise, but they are viewing it as an opportunity to really dial in their best gymnastics because every score counts. Sabrina Vega doing a Yurchenko full. Had to pike down a little on that landing. Oh, good control. Nice job for the young lady new to the vault lineup this year. There is Sammy Durante, the freshman from Athens, Georgia. You want to talk about emotional night for all these families. Sammy's mother, Dana, was the coach here for five years. She was let go last year. There she is in the stands cheering on LSU because Sammy had committed to come here and be a Georgia gym dog when her mom was the coach. But when her mom was let go, Sammy chose to go to LSU, and she has done an outstanding job as a freshman in the leadoff role on bars. And how appropriate to be a Tiger. She is so aggressive on this event. She swings big, goes for every skill in a huge way, and that's how you get the big scores, especially in this leadoff position. She's worked really hard on form, legs together, nailing the handstands. Let's see if she can start them off with a stick, half in, half out. Oh, a little stumble backwards. The routine, however, was solid. Here's her single bar release move. Very nice height, a little bit close in on the regrass. She could not quite get that shape in the air on the dismount to find the landing, and they'll deduct some for the hop back. Good start for the LSU Tigers on bars. We go back to the vault. Sabrina Vega's score was a 9-7-7-5. Now here's another freshman. This is Marissa Oakley from Huntersville, North Carolina. She'll be performing a Yurchenko full as well. It has a 9-9-5 start value. Pretty good block. She landed a little bit close to the table and then had a pretty sizable hop back. Those will be deductions. Let's go down to the third member of our broadcast team, Laura Rutledge. Well, Bart, you mentioned LSU coming into this meet with back-to-back -back 198s. Maya Hambrick, who we're about to see on bars, said that that was a result of a team meeting, actually a gymnast-only meeting that happened after their Missouri meet. They were consistently around 197, and they knew they could do better. What they were doing in the gym, they wanted to see it translate to the floor. They decided to squeak out every last detail, every last landing, and tonight their goal, no different. 198, or they're disappointed. Good point, Laura. We watched them in that meet against Missouri, and that was the first time there was a couple of bumps in the road for the LSU Tigers. Although they are undefeated in the SEC this year. The score in for Sammy Durante, a solid 9-8-2-5 to start them off. And here is the 12-time All-American, Maya Hambrick, the senior from nearby Temple, Georgia. And right at the top, she's going to open with a huge ray. Perfect distance from the bar. She has got these handstands down pat. Very effortless swing. She'll do a double layout, 
see if she can find this landing. Or actually, half in, half out. Beautiful landing. Very, very nice job. Excellent performance for the young lady who is really known as one of the most underrated gymnasts in LSU history. Judges look for the height. Two feet above the bar, very nice height. I love the distance. Perfectly outstretched arms as she made that regrass. And a full twisting double back, just a slight hop back and off to the side. Back to vault for Georgia. By the way, they're ranked 18th in the country on the vault. Marissa Oakley had a 9.75. That brings up Rachel Dixon, the sophomore from Michigan. And they're gonna need to show more amplitude to get those big scores. They're not quite getting the big vault. They're not setting up the block on the table to really blast it up and out. You'll see she has an angle in her shoulders as she makes contact with the table. Really hard to push all the way through to get yourself way up high and maintain that laid out position throughout the vault. Oakley had a rough competition on the bars and beam last week. Good start there on the vault. Ruby Harold, the two-time Olympian from Great Britain, set to go for LSU on the bars. And we mentioned earlier, LSU had that ridiculous 49-725 on bars last week. And even associate head coach Jay Clark said, okay, that was the scores were just a little bit in play. Check out this first skill. Very unique, original Zuko, right to the handstand on that low bar. She has a short, sweet bar routine. Toe on, to a blind change. Her release move is called a Jaeger, and she sets it up here, a double tuck, front tuck, dismount. That's one of the best bar routines I've seen her do in college. This is just so cool. This was invented back in the 70s. Erica Zuckold of Germany did that skill. Very nice double front. I thought she had the landing, just landed a little stiff-legged. Score for Rachel Dixon was a 9-7-7-5. That brings up redshirt senior Lauren Johnson from Atlanta. Beautiful dynamics on that vault. There's your bigger vault. Nice amplitude, good height and distance. The judges are also looking for form. They want to see perfectly straight legs and pointed toes. Wow. Very nice height. Look at that. Five feet above the table. Nice laid out position. I think she could have gotten a little bit more dis distance by not hiking down just a hair too soon. Kathy, a friend of mine pointed out the other day that that means if she's hips are five feet above the vault table, her head is higher than an NBA style rim in basketball. That woman could dunk. <laughs> Good job for Georgia. Their scores haven't been outstanding there. Her score comes in as a 9-7-7-5. So Georgia Lacking depth on vault, has yet to break into the 9-8s on that event here in the first rotation. Ruby Harold had a 9-8-5, and that sets up Kennedy Edney for LSU on bars. Speaking of the NBA, her, her father, Tyus, was one of the former UCLA basketball stars, now is an assistant coach at UCLA. He made his name famous by some heroics in the NCAA Final Four tournament for the UCLA Bruins. We're gonna see a lot of different release moves in this competition between these two teams. Kennedy does a Hindor. It's gonna come out right here, out of the clear hip into the reverse hat. You see some gymnasts put their toes on the bar to go into that release move, some come out of the giant. Nice handstand. They really focus on the details. Double layout, gorgeous. Laid out position in the air. That's one of her better bar routines. Look at that. Right out of the clear hip and then pops it up into the reverse hat, flying backwards over that bar. That was the best part of the routine right there, that double layout. Okay, head coach Dee Dee Bro likes it. The Tigers off to a good start in that first rotation on the uneven bars. Back to vault because this will be the final vaulter for Georgia. And this, of course, is Sydney Sneed. She has a big vault. Now. It's a huge one and a half twist, and she nailed it in the 30 second warm up. Oh, oh gosh, she was thinking about that stick just a little too soon. I know she wanted it because the one in warm up was perfect. By the way, the score for Lauren Johnson before her, a 9 7 7 5. 
Look at the tight body in the air. Just a very slight leg separation towards the end of the twist. Right there, they cross just ever so slightly. And of course, that, that step back, they're going to lift it up for. Sydney Sneed scored a perfect 10 on floor exercise last week. And uh, we'll see here on the floor exercise towards the end of this competition. Back to the bars now for LSU. Kennedy Edney's 9-9 came in, and this is Lexi Friesman. She can fly here. She can absolutely fly, and she's cleaned up her leg form on the bars, really trying to not give away any tenths of a point for any reason. Big dismount here. Double layout. Oh, the hop back. They're not quite getting the landings here today. We're not going to see that huge score that we saw last week. Judges sit right on the side, so they're going to see if they're in that handstand position. She does a nice job of finessing it to really hold it and show off the handstand. I'm going to start looking, though, whether they swing up to the handstand. We really want to start getting a little pickier as we progress in the season. Priestman, the junior from Cincinnati, has struggled with injuries, but does a nice job there. Let's take a look at the quick Look at the rules here for collegiate gymnastics. Six gymnasts on each team on each event, unless you don't have six, as Georgia only has five. And that means the best five sc scores count towards a team total. And that, in the case of Georgia, they have to count every single score. They can't drop one. After all four apparatus, the team with the highest cumulative score wins. And as we noted, the home team does what we call the Olympic order, vault, bars, beam, and floor. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Well, Bart, we'll see Sarah Finnegan here on the bars for LSU. And it wasn't that long ago that she was a quiet freshman coming in to join this very boisterous LSU team that takes on the personality of Dee Dee Bro. She says that she has become a much better vocal leader this year, and her teammates notice it too. And sometimes they're like, wait, is that little Sarah? But she's really embraced the role. Thank you, Laura. Well, little Sarah is swinging big, I can <laughs> tell you that. Huge release move. Bail the handstand, nicely done. Been two nine nines in a row for Edney and Priestman on bars here. No real stuck landings though. Oh, still couldn't get one. They just did not have it tonight. Those landings are not there. Nice height though on the release move. Look at that, two feet above the bar. Pretty good form throughout. I love how much swing she gets out of the release move and then into the dismount. We can still expect a good score for the young lady who has part of the six-way NCAA title from last year's championship. All right, we are underway here in Athens, Georgia. Great start to this SEC gymnastics competition. Don't go away. after the first of four rotations in this classic matchup in SCC Gymnastics. Hi everybody, I'm Bart Connor along with Kathy Johnson-Clark, my fellow Olympian. Always excited to be working with you, Kathy. It's an interesting meet tonight because we have two teams on a very different trajectory. Let's first of all talk about Georgia. Now, Courtney Kupets carter is in her first season here. She, of course, is the iconic star of Georgia, and they're really trying to recapture the magic that they had several years ago. That's absolutely what they're trying to do. They've had some instability the last nine years, major coaching changes three times now, but bringing Courtney back, they're hoping for some magic. They want to feel that dynasty again, so they're starting to build it brick by brick. We're expecting another 10,000 crowd plus tonight. And in fact, let's take a look at this. Utah, LSU, Alabama always do well with crowds. Even though there has been instability in the program for a few years, the Georgia fans have not left, Kathy, have no, they? No, they have not. All the red and black in the arena, the energy, the support, that's what they're going to build on. All right, Courtney Kupech carter the first-year head coach, and she brought in her volunteer assistant coach as Suzanne Yachlin, the legendary coach and the winner of so many national titles. Sydney Sneed will talk about her role when we come back. I think probably the biggest thing for me, um, if you're looking at a growth point of view, would definitely be team. Like, I just feel like, you know, in club, it was very individualized, a lot about just yourself, and I've definitely learned how to develop and invest into the team, and I love that. I just think it's so fun being able to invest in every single routine that goes up. 
when I look back to my freshman year, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I've come so far um, individually and you know, as uh, as a whole. And I mean, it's great to see and just think back to those great memories that we've had. And definitely, to look where I am now is completely different, but in a good way. I feel like a freshman again, restarting. It's kind of a good feeling, like a refreshing feeling, um, just to be able to go back out there for a new team and a new goal that we have. And so I love it. Sydney Sneed says a big part of her personal growth has had to do with her new head coach, Courtney Kupetz Carter. And she said sometimes they all look around at each other and can't believe that Courtney Kupetz is actually their coach. When they go places, Sydney says that Courtney a lot of times is the one everyone is asking for autographs. But if you remember, Courtney Kupetz tore both of her Achilles during her time before college and then when she got to college. And so she knows how to deal with injuries, something that's been very helpful for somebody like Sydney Sneed, who is dealing with a back injury all the time, has to to manage it and it can be quite difficult. That's a good point Laura. People often focus on her legendary career, the 15-time All-American, but she had a lot of adversity and yet still overcame them. Yeah. All right, LSU on the vault here in the second rotation, Juliana Canamella, the junior from Waxhaw, North Carolina, off to a good start. She opened with a beautiful Yurchenko full. She sets that vault up as well as anyone and I know she's training a one and a half. It has to be right there. Here's the bar lineup for Georgia. This is one of the few events where they actually have six athletes to perform. Lauren Johnson will lead them off here. The redshirt senior from Atlanta did her club training at Gwinnett Gymnastics Center just down the road. She's really been working hard to find a spot in this lineup for her entire career, Kathy. And aside from that, she provides so much leadership. The one thing she really has to work on on this event is her form. Her feet and her legs, they tend to come apart and the toes just don't quite point. So those little deductions add up. She wants to show off her amplitude, however. Nice handstand position right there. Here's a place she can show it off. Going for height on that double layout. Didn't quite get what she did in the warm-ups and couldn't handle the landing. Now remember, the judges are looking for form. They're going to hit her on form, but they're also going to hit her for being short of this handstand. That's a big deduction on bars. There are some uh, final notes from Suzanne Yachlin, the volunteer assistant coach, as we go back to Sarah Finnegan for LSU on ball. This is as clean and precise a Yurchenko fall Oh, as you will oh, see, oh. and if you can be dainty on a vault, <laughs> she is that. She is so elegant in the air, and she's pretty uncanny at finding the landing. Really timed the block nicely, even got the arms to go out, flared it out a little bit to so, show some style there. Wow. That's going to earn her some bonus points in and the eyes of the judges. look at the control on the <laughs> landing. Some of those stick crowns, I have to say, were questionable. That one was... Undeniable, well done for Sarah Finnegan, the junior from Lee Summit, Missouri, who has an incredible pedigree as an elite gymnast as well, the eight-time All-American. Back to the bars now. Lauren Johnson had a 9-6-5, so they'll need to be stronger than that if they're going to contend with LSU today. Emily Shield. This is her second time in the lineup. She was injured in the fall. This is the one event she has gotten back into. Oh, no Ooh, leg separation, save. but she did save it, Bart. Scored only a 9-2-5 her first time in the lineup last week, struggling. She has such nice straight arm work on uneven bars. They are going to get her on that form. And a little on the landing and the dismount. Oh, too bad. Now, the judges do sit right on the side, so it's harder for them to see what we see here but they are way apart. They will definitely see the arch, however. So both of those two things will add up to a fairly sizable deduction. Sarah Edwards up for LSU now. Sarah Finnegan in 9-9 after Canamella's 9-8-2-5. Big vault from a short run. That's a one and a half twist. Just a reminder, the one and a half twist is scored from a 10.0 that's the highest score in terms of start value good block pretty good position she finishes the one and a half with her head about level with the table and that good distance as well Go 
Back to the bars for Georgia. This is Natalie Vakulik. Emily Shield had a 9-7-2-5. Vakulik, the senior from Whitby, Ontario. This routine has probably the highest potential in terms of big score. This nice straight body swing. There's a full pirouette. Check this out. One of the most gorgeous mm. gingers I have ever seen. So far, this is an excellent bar routine. This is what they need right here. If she can get a stick, this is going to be their biggest score. Half in, half out. Oh, almost. Mm. Just that little hop forward. But her release move is so beautiful. Watch this. She does a fly away, then half twist. Almost completely laid out throughout the entire skill. That is just beautiful beyond words. Toes pointed in the dismount. A little bit of a leggy, the last part of that dismount. Kathy, I got to say, we, we knew Everhart Ginger. He wished yes. he did it as well oh. as she does that move. Okay, back to ball. LSU's Lexi Friesman. So great to see Lexi in the vault oh, lineup oh, and stick. come up with a perfect stick on her Yurchenko full. Sarah Edwards had a 9.825. Now this has a start value of 9.95. So they're not going to take any deduction for that landing. The only deductions they could really take, she could be a little bit higher, a little bit farther, just in terms of the overall dynamics, but they're going to love that landing. And they hand her the stick crown as Jay Clark gives her congratulations. We go back to the bars now for Georgia. Bakulik had a 9-8-2-5. That's their best score so far there. Marissa Oakley up now. Now she has probably waited all week long to get back mm. on these bars. She had a disastrous routine. I'm so glad to see her. Look how aggressively she is going after this routine. Those handstand positions. Beautiful back-to-back -back release. Going from low to high and back down to low. Great job so far. She can nail that handstand. May have been a tad short, but gorgeous form. Look how straight her body is. Half in, half out. Oh, good for her. After a real rough go last week, when she went over the, on handstand twice, she handled it beautifully today, Kathy. Her handstand position, when she holds it, is just gorgeous. Really impressed with her technique and form. Beautiful technique. Little flex feet on her half and half out. Couldn't quite stick the landing, but what a great routine for her. Marissa Oakley, the freshman, well done. Maya Hambrick now coming up after Les Lexi Priestman scores in a 9-8. This is a big one and a half. It has gotten better all year long. She can't quite get the landing. It's such a hard landing because you really have to feel for it. You want to spot the floor at the full. So you see the floor right here and then turn your head and feel for the landing. If you bring that head forward, look at this, nice height. She just really brings her head and chest too far forward on the landing to get a stick, but great vault in the air. As we go back to bars, how about this from Marissa Oakley? Got a 9-9 after having gotten a let's say less than great performance last week. So good job and recovery for her. That brings up Sydney Sneed. And she needs to emphasize her form. She has just pencil straight handstands, legs glued together. She doesn't have huge amplitude on that release move, so she needs to be perfect in the form department. Little pause there on that stand low bar. They may take a slight rhythm deduction there. Double layout. Oh, too much of a pipe down. It's so difficult to time that perfect release point on the dismount. Oh, that's a little bit short. She is almost to that 80 degree mark. They're probably going to take a little deduction there. And she just released a little too soon and slung it out. This young lady is ranked 20th in the all-around in the NCAA this week. Kennedy Edney set to go on vault for LSU. Maya Hambrick before her a 9-9. Kennedy Edney, the NCAA National Vault Champion. She has a big vault if she can stick it. One and a half twist. Very big in the air. Large step on the landing, so they'll take that deduction.
beautiful block. See how far back she gets on the table? That just launches her into the afterflight. Gives her great height and distance. You see Bob Moore there on the sidelines. He is responsible for coaching that vault lineup, and that has traditionally been a standout team for LSU, their vault performers. Rachel Dixon up on bars now for Georgia. Waiting on the score for Sydney Steen. Kathy, we talked about this program in transition. Courtney Coupets Carter in charge now. Dana Durani was here for five years. Jay Clark for three before. But there's a lot of enthusiasm about having Courtney back. Not only is she respected around here as a legendary gymnast, but people are wishing her well in terms of her coaching career. Also. And she's very versatile as a coach. She can coach any of the events. She's been doing a lot of time on the uneven bars. Nice. Oh, oh, that my. is such a shame. I was just about to say what oh. an absolutely gorgeous release move. I thought she was going to be the perfect distance from the bar. Look how big that ball oh. just cannot quite get her grips over the top of the bar. And you really need to get the fold of your grip all the way over. That's a shame, because that was a beauty of a release move. Just uh, might have rushed it just ever so slightly. So it's a five-tenths of a point reduction for the fall. Dixon, the sophomore from Canton, Michigan. Picks up the routine where she fell. Nice straight back on her handstand position. She really knows how to flatten that back. Oh. And a big step on the landing. This will be the, the score they want to drop, obviously. So they've got five decent scores, including that one big one by Marissa Oakley. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. She's with Coach Dee Dee Bro. All right, thanks, Bart. Coach, you're coming off back-to-back -back 198s, but still, you're just telling your team right there, need them to focus on their preparation. What do you mean by that? Well, We've been training, you know, I mean, this is a halfway point of our season, and we've been focusing on consistency and controlling landings, and we really haven't done that tonight. We've had great performances, but a little stepping around on landing. So we want to go to floor. It's a pretty bouncy floor, so we need them to control their landing. So focus on your training, what we've been practicing. What are the keys to controlling your landings on a bouncy floor for those out there who may not understand that? You have to see it. You have to know where you are, and you have to anticipate the floor and be supple. Let your knees take the landing. Don't, don't hit the floor and rebound. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Thank you all. A big lead for LSU at the halfway point in this competition. They'll go to floor exercise, and the host Georgia Gym Dogs will be on the beam. Don't go away. Back to Athens, LSU with a lead of nearly a point over the host Georgia Gym Dogs. LSU goes to floor exercise in this rotation, and there is Lexi Priestman. Well, she has had a variety of injuries over the years, and she spoke with us earlier said this might just be her year, though. Um, I personally feel like I'm at a good spot. Um, the team's just been behind me this whole, this whole experience, and I haven't had the healthiest years yet, but I'm ready this year to have a healthy season. Life is like a roller coaster. Um, if your roller coaster stays straight the whole time, it's not fun. It makes you realize what kind of person you are. I've grown a lot um, as an individual, and I feel like there's other girls who have um, hit adversities, and now I can kind of help them through it. I finally feel like I'm really in a spot where it is my time just to trust my training, trust my body, and know that the trainers have done everything they can to get me to where I am and to be healthy again. So I finally feel like I am where I want to be, and I really think this might be my season to be healthy. Lexi Priestman has been a lot healthier this year, although she still deals with some nagging injuries, but has just decided to throw caution to the wind, get out there and compete the way that she knows that she can. One person who's actually been a great encourager to her is McKenna Kelly, who of course tore her Achilles before the season. McKenna has been so inspiring to Lexi, and Lexi in the past had been somebody who really had inspired McKenna. So that relationship has been very helpful for both of these young ladies. As we all know, unfortunately, injuries part of gymnastics, but sometimes those are the things that make these gymnasts that much stronger when they come back. And Lexi Priestman, look at her accomplishments. Even with all the injuries, I believe six surgeries in all, she has been a stalwart performer for the LSU Tiger. 
It's a great night of gymnastics in Friday Night Heights. In fact, later on, it's Auburn and Alabama, and there is Auburn standout Abby Malaya. Hey, looks like she's working camera tonight. <laughs> wow, what a night. We're back in Friday Night Heights. Bart Connor, along with Kathy Johnson-Clark set for the second half of this competition. As you can see, LSU with a substantial lead of .875 over the host, Georgia Gym Dogs. Now this is interesting because Sydney Sneed, the junior from Raleigh, North Carolina, who has really been an anchor for this team, she prefers the leadoff spot on beam. This is a great position for Sydney, not just for her gymnastics, but her leadership as well. She can really set the stage for a solid beam performance. It's a cat leap into a switch leg leap, standing back tuck. Judges are really looking for them in terms of giving them bonus or credit for those connections. No movement in between those elements. No extraneous movement. On front, very solid so far. It seems like, depending on the attitude of the athlete, some really like the challenge of that leadoff spot. Others kind of shy away from it, but it seems to be fitting for Sydney Sneed, who's quite confident. Some people like to warm up and go. They don't want to stand there and think. They don't want to watch others perform. They just need to go. Double twist, solid routine for Sydney. She's a little bit of form issues occasionally. Here's her three element series back handspring to a layout to a back handspring and we got to see it exactly the way the judges see it they sit right on the side so they can see whether the gymnasts hit that full split position in their leaps ashlyn kirby will be the first performer for lsu on the floor the sophomore from north carolina you see their lineup this is in fact the optimum lineup for the LSU Tigers. We were talking to associate head coach Jay Clark the other day. He said, when we're clicking on all cylinders, these would be the six young ladies that would be our best possible lineup. Whoop. I remember hearing Judy Bro talk about really wanting to see more control on the landing. She just did exactly what she didn't want to see her do, and that was bounce on the landing. You have to really be ready to absorb the landing, especially when you're on a floor as bouncy as this one. Tuck double back. She really got the landing on that second pass. We talked about how these two teams are at very different points in their development. LSU lost 16 straight dual meets here in Athens. In fact, the last win LSU beat Georgia here in this building was all the way back to 1983. And LSU has a solid lead right now in this third rotation. Much better control there. Ashlyn doesn't have the most difficult tumbling passes, so she really has to make sure she shows control on the landing and very clean form throughout the performance. This was her bigger pass, the double back. This one in tuck position, lands nice and high with the chest and good control. Interesting that Ashlyn Kirby's sister, Whitney, competed at the University of Georgia. Jasmine Arnold, the senior from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Jasmine's competed on floor all season. She's been in the beam lineup a few times. She's a little shaky last week. She competed, made no lineups last year for the Georgia Gym Dogs, but this year contributing significantly. There's her dance series. Ariel walk over to a back handspring. That is her acrobatic series. They have to do that with no extraneous movement in between. You really got to connect those two to get credit. Score, by the way, for Sydney Sneed was a 9-8-2-5. Not a bad start for Georgia here. Nice, solid performance. One and a half twist. Good job. This is a round off to a one and a half twist, blind landing. 
Notice her focus, her eyes straight forward, not on the ground where she's landing. Christina Desiderio, the freshman from Hackettstown, New Jersey, did her club training, Parquette. Typically we see her in balance. As I mentioned earlier, she is ideally also in their best floor lineup. They are very excited to have her and Lexi both in the lineup at the same time. Want to see how that works. She opens with a huge double layout, little bit of a pike down, but good control on the landing. Ashlyn Kirby scores a 9-8-2-5. Back with her combination pass, a front, uh -oh, oh, oh, through to a double back, no control on that landing. Now it's a big bounce backwards. But remember, she hasn't competed much on floor exercise, and that's just something you need experience to learn how to get those landings in a performance. You know, it's interesting here in the Steg, as they call it, Stegman Coliseum, all the equipment is on the basketball court, which gives its additional amount of springiness. Now, some gyms don't allow the equipment to be set up on the basketball court and so some floors are just harder but this one makes the dynamics of this floor mat even springier we mentioned that last week because some of the florida gymnasts introduced their new more difficult passes on this floor for that reason very bouncy nice finish with the pike double back showing good difficulty finishing with that pass okay not bad they're going to deduct that middle pass pretty significantly Here's a young lady that was only 16 when she came to campus. She graduated early. She turned 17 years of age in her first month in college. Now this is the most difficult. It's a double back in laid out position. That longer body, much more difficult, much more challenging to get it around. And this one is in a tough position. Almost overcooked it. Lucky she stayed in bounds. I don't think there was luck involved. That takes a lot of skill. On the beam now, Marissa Oakley, 9-7-7-5 was the score for Jasmine Arnold after Sydney Sneeds, 9-8-2-5. Now we saw Marissa hit a beautiful balance beam routine last week when she came after that disastrous bar routine, really turned it around. So wonderful to see a freshman handle that. Now she's coming in with some momentum, did an excellent bar routine in the previous rotation. Nice floaty back handspring layout step out. Really elegant position in the air, toes pointed. She's one of those freshmen who have acknowledged that collegiate gymnastics is a whole lot different than club gymnastics. Notice Big that. crowds and lots of pressure. Notice that very difficult position in her second jump, a ring. When you take your eyes off the beam and touch your head with your foot. What a great performance. That has to be the best beam routine she's done so far this season. <laughs> you can see sheer joy on the face of Marissa Oakley. Watch this. She even keeps toes pointed throughout the entire layout step out. She is three for three tonight in her events. Look at that position. Gorgeous ring position in here. Things looking up for the Georgia Gym Dogs as she gets a hug from Suzanne Yachlin. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Well, Bert, you mentioned earlier that Kidney Edney, who we're about to see on floor for LSU, her dad, Tyus Edney, the UCLA basketball player. I asked her at one point if she ended up getting a lot of people recognizing her because of her dad. You see her great tumbling. She said, no, they don't recognize me because of my dad, but my dad has a lot of people who come up to him and say, hey, I saw your daughter on gymnastics on TV, and I see where she gets her hops. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. I'm sure there was a lot of pressure when she was young to play basketball. She had the hype, but her heart was in gymnastics. You know, she tinkered with elite gymnastics, but instead opted to stay level 10, not unlike Alex McMurtry from Georgia. A great decision for this young lady because she is thriving in college. 
Marissa Oakley's score is in on beam, by the way, for Georgia, a 995 career high, Kathy. Yeah, good for her. Kennedy's got a great routine going so far. Nice height on the tuck double back. The tumbling was absolutely <gasps> explosive. Good control on the landings. <laughs> Oh, this routine is definitely highlighted by the energy and power in her tumbling. She opens with an Arabian double. Nice push through those shoulders on the back handspring to set it up. And great height here. Tuck double back lands with that chest way up high. Good control. All right, they hand her the stick crown. Well deserved. Back to the beam now. This is Vivi Bobolis, the senior from Montreal, Quebec. To the 995 from Marissa Oakley. What a thrill for Georgia. Beautiful combination. Front aerial to a standing layout step out. That, that's going above and beyond in terms of just basic difficulty requirement. Great combinations. And Suzanne Yawkland has really been brought in to work specifically here on Balance Beam, trying to get Vivi to look up, take her eyes off the beam, look out at the audience. That's, it's a hard thing to do if that has not been in your training. Wait, did you say take your eyes off the beam? Yes. It's allowed. <laughs> yeah, they said sometimes she gets a little bit tight when she's competing, but this is flowing very nicely. This is nice coming up after a really hit routine from Oakley. And another one. Very well done. Great job. Four great routines for the gym dogs who are trailing the Tigers in this rotation. I just loved all the difficulty, the combinations. Aerial walkover right into a standing layout step out. No hesitation between. Well done. Back over to the floor for LSU. Lexi Priestman set to go. The junior out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Kennedy Edney's score is in. It's a 9 out. It's so exciting seeing her in all of the lineups, especially these leg events. She's had injuries. Opens with a full end. Great landing. The judges should take in consideration not just landings, that's often the case, but they're also looking for the form in the air. We noted her struggle with injuries. She's had surgeries on ankles, toes, a knee, and both shoulders, and yet she's competing at the highest level in collegiate gymnastics. Good for her. Double back, that's about the best she's done. That final tumbling run. She lands with one foot slightly in front of the other. It's more to protect that one ankle. And she does it very elegantly. So she opens with a double back with a full twist. One of the more difficult passes, that's an E pass. And then O closes with a very difficult D pass, a pike double back. Down to Laura Rutledge. Well, Bart, Courtney Capetz Carter had told us that she felt like Beam could be one of the best apparatus for this team. And one of the things that Sydney Sneed said earlier this week to me is just how much the confidence has grown in this team. They know that sometimes they only have five up, five down on events. They don't care because they have become such a confident group this year. A lot of that coming from Courtney and just coming from their commitment to reps in the gym. Rachel Dixon on the beam now after Vivi Bobolis is career high of a 9-9. Little trouble with that front aerial. Just 
score in for Alexi Priestman. Career high on floor for LSU in 995. The acrobatic series, back hands from layout, step out. Good save. Really, Georgia having an excellent rotation here on beam. The previous two routines were, were season highs. They were fantastic routines, huge scores. This one will not get that big score, but it's a hit routine. A couple balance issues, but not bad. So five hit routines for the Georgia Gym Dogs on one of the few events where they put up six athletes. They'll finish with Sabrina Vega in their anchor spot. Just rushed into that landing a little too soon. You really have to bring your chest up as the legs come down for the landing, really attack that position. Back to floor for LSU. We noted that Lexi Priestman had a career high 9.95 after Kennedy Edney's 9.9. This brings up Sarah Finnegan. Well, they, Time all American. they have set up their last two performers on floor for some huge scores. Sarah's the complete package here on floor exercise. Just a beautiful dancer. And watch this tumbling. Back one and a half twist, all the way through to a two and a half twist. She has great musicality. And just the details of her dance are so exquisite. High tuck double back even kicks out a little bit to look for that landing. Talk about an athletic family. Her father, Don, a wrestler at Iowa State, part of their national championship team. Her sister, Hannah, competed at Missouri. And her younger sister, Aaliyah, has committed to come to LSU in 2022. Look at those gorgeous Damn. leaps. Rotated that uh, front somersault in the routine. It'll be interesting to see if the judges see it. She covered it so beautifully with such finesse and with her dance. Look at that wow. landing, that gorgeous control on a pike double back. Just a lovely routine from start to finish. Her mother put the kids in gymnastics because she heard that gymnastics was good for toddler brain development, and she also created some world-class gymnasts. Look how she keeps just perfect form with all the flips and twists. That's a lot of, a lot of movement in one pass, and a pipe double back, perfectly pointed toes. Sabrina Vega will be the final performer for Georgia on the beam. The score in for Rachel Dixon, a 9-7-2-5. Now, if Vega can get a 9-8-7-5, it could lead to a season-high team score on beam for Georgia. Kathy. Sarah Finnegan's score is in a 9-9-2-5 for LSU on the floor. I love this balance beam routine and the way she performs it. It's just so beautiful. And you'll see in a moment why she's performing to Michael Jackson on Balance Beam. And, and she's not actually performing to the music. <laughs> That's her chosen background music. Since they're at a home meet, they can choose the music that plays. She's such a natural Balance Beam worker. It just looks easy. You don't want them to see you work. Beautiful position in the air. Perfect split position. Even when she might, oh, there, yeah, it is. there it is. The designated moonwalk. Somebody at Georgia has to do it every year. It's a tradition. She takes this position so oh. significantly. This anchor position is wow. hers. And she loves to deliver for her team. We could be looking at a team high on balance beam for the Georgia Gym Dogs. Look how beautiful that picture is right there. That could hang on a wall. And even if the moonwalk isn't difficult, it's always a crowd favorite. But look at the landing and the 
perfect position. Expect no a big score there. Well done for Sabrina Vega. Final performer in this rotation on floor for LSU, Maya Hamrick. Coming after Sarah Finnegan's 9-9-2-5. Now she's gonna open with a double layout. She does a little different technique. Hollows right there in the second somersault to find the landing. Ranked number one in the nation on floor. Her average is 9-9-6-4. Her consistency has been remarkable really throughout her career. Look at the height. Oh, oh no, no, no. Wow, good. good save. Very good save. She was so high on the two and a half twist. She was just waiting for the ground to come to her so she could block and punch into the next skill. It's very interesting, as Laura and Coach Didi Bro pointed out, trouble on those landings because this floor is particularly springy. She finishes with a pike double back. Oh, oh my and a big goodness. bounce out of bounds. Now that is something you don't usually see from Maya Hambrick. And I would say it's the bouncy floor. She had a 9-9-7-5 on floor this week. She will not get that, obviously. But once again, tough landings for LSU in this event. She opened up beautifully with her double layout. Had this landing just fine. Notice how she bends the legs, absorbs the landing. Here, she's so high, it was so bouncy, she mistimed it and it killed her bounce. Almost like when you're on a trampoline, somebody steals your bounce by bouncing with you. And this she just overdid completely. The pike double back and bounced out. And Laura is with Courtney Kupets carter All right, thanks, Bart. Courtney, three career highs on that beam rotation. Also, your season high on beam. But I want to go back to Marissa Oakley. Her 995 and your reaction. Why did you react that way? Because she's been getting so close. And in the gym, we see it all the time. And last week, she had an absolutely beautiful routine and got ahead of herself on that dismount. And so I was just like, OK, hold on, hold on. You got a dismount. You got a dismount when she landed. You just feel so much enjoyment when they put the work in. And you finally see it come out the way it should. And so for me, it was just like a moment of like, oh, go girl, you did it. It's just so exciting. I love it. Last week when you headed to floor, you wanted your team to perform in front of this crowd. We saw Sydney Sneed get a perfect 10. What's your wish tonight for them? Uh, just to have fun and perform. Find the landing is the biggest thing uh, on each and every single one of those passes and to really enjoy themselves. Really to let go of the tension and the pressure. There is none. Go out there, have fun, let's do our job. And, and I'm excited for this event. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, LSU has a lead of .925 going into the fourth rotation. Georgia will be on the floor. LSU will be on the beam. And Kathy Johnson-Clark will break down some of the difficulty values on the floor routines when we come back. On what could be a historic night, LSU has not won in this building since 1983. And they have a lead of .925 over LSU. Now let's take a look at who's competing with style, brought to you by Bell. We're going to talk about just the basics of difficulty on floor, and it's all physics. The smaller or shorter the radius, the easier it is to flip that tuck position. Now lengthen it with straighter legs in the piked position, or fully stretched out, laid out position, much more difficult to rotate two times around. All right, fourth rotation coming up. Georgia on the floor, LSU on the B. You know I'm straight.
And we're set for the fourth and final rotation. LSU has a lead of .925. They haven't won in this building in a dual meet competition since back in 1983. We're set to go on the balance beam. And Kathy Johnson-Clark, people often ask, how do these judges calculate these scores? Every event has some special requirements. And let's take a look at what the judges are looking for on the balance beam routine. Well, it's a little more complicated than that, but we can at least show you some of the special composition requirements that every gymnast must perform in some way. And as Erin McAdeg goes through her balance beam routine, we'll just check them off. She has designed this routine perfectly to maximize her bonus points. She gets a lot through her dance series. She gets a lot by doing D and E elements. I'll try to point those out along the way as well. She gets a few notes from Dee Dee Bro in her 41st season. They are undefeated in the SEC and they have a substantial lead but they have to do the beam, and it's coming up right now. McAdeg, the senior from Redwood City, California. Beam is her baby. She performs this event so perfectly. You don't even realize that she's really going through all of these elements that are necessary for those big scores. Certainly, you want a tenor start value. Right here is the first one. She opens with her full turn on one foot. Check. And this is her dance series, and it is a big one because there are three elements. Switch leg leap, switch half. That's an E. Oh, and she didn't do the beat jump, but she gets credit, so she does get a check for the dance series because she connected the switch leap into the switch half. Showed the full split in the air. That's a 180-degree split. She performs her acro series towards the end of the routine, really spreads out the difficulty. This is her back handspring, layout, step out. Very well done, check. And into the dismount, must be at least a C. Hers is a C. Gymnastics moves are rated from A, B, C, D, E, and so on. A minimum C-level dismount is required in cleaning gymnastics. And as I said, it's so much more complicated than that. On your acro series, you have to either earn bonus, which she doesn't with hers. So she adds another element, the front aerial, and that switch half, a very difficult E dance move to earn all of her bonus. If you do the basic requirements on a floor exercise or a beam routine, it's a 9-5 start by you. Those extra tens for combinations and difficulty help the gymnast get to a 10-0 start value, which of course is the benchmark. And most of the gymnasts in the top teams in the country, all of their routines have a 10.0 start value, with the exception of vault. She opens with a pike to the back. We saw many of the LSU gymnasts finish their routines with that skill. Saw Jasmine Arnold on beam earlier with a 9.775. And she comes back with a tuck double back. Remember that uh, the difficulty I showed you, the tuck double back is the easiest, then the pike double. There is nothing more fun than performing floor exercise in front of your home crowd. They know your routine. By the end of the season, they could probably all do it with you. It's funny, everybody groans on that jump to splits, but for the gymnast, it's kind of routine, isn't it? Arnold did not compete in any meets last year. This year has worked her way into an important role for the gym dogs. She opens with her. Ends with her combination pass, a back one and a half to a front layout. <laughs> <laughs> I'd well. say she's pretty excited. <laughs> Here's a team that's doing out with Gigi Marino, who tore her Achilles in the first meet of the season. And Gracie Cherry has a, a medical, so they have been thin on depth, but Jasmine has done her part. And the combination pass, it's a requirement. She does a back one and a half to a front layout. Two different somersaults in the same pass. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. 
We're about to see Maya Hamrick on beam for LSU, and she is from Temple, Georgia, which is about two hours away. She has a whole lot of cheering sections here, actually two separate sections that are pretty much the Maya Hamrick section. She told me coming into this meet that she was so excited to see everybody. There have been a few times throughout the meet where she's just made eye contact with her family. Definitely some special moments for this gymnast who, as you both said, underrated, not really highly recruited, has learned a lot of her gymnastics at the collegiate level continues to be such a cornerstone for this team. Thank you, Laura. Maya Hambrick, I mean, excuse me, Eric McAdig scores, is in, is at 9-8. Maya Hambrick now. 12-time All-American. You mentioned she was sort of under the radar for many coaches, and she has just been so impressive in her career for LSU. And I can really see the serious look on her face. Nice combination. One of my favorite, actually, that hitch kick to an aerial cartwheel. One of the other requirements the gymnast has to perform going forward, an acro skill forward and backwards. The forward can include a side move. So that aerial cartwheel fulfills that requirement. Erin was just slightly off on her balance beam routine. So Maya is doing a great job just pulling it right back on track because this is a team who they're, they're looking at that 9-9 range. They really want to put up as many 9-9 or better routines. And it's this time of the season we've got to start seeing them. Double twist. Good fight in that routine, really well done. LSU coming off a two straight 198. This is their third meet in seven days, and still they look fresh. Their level of fitness is really impressive, Kathy. Excellent job, double twist. More than fulfills that uh, minimum C requirement for the dismount. Vivi Babalis now coming after Jasmine Arnold led them off with a 9.85. This is one of the events where Georgia has only five performers due to injuries. So every score counts. That's a whip back to a really nice landing on the double top. She does no back handsprings in this routine, you'll notice. She's had elbow injuries, and so the coaches have really gotten creative with her routine so that they can minimize the strain on the elbows. The first pass had a whip back, which is basically a back handspring with no hands. And then her final tumbling pass, she'll do another double back, but she does it right out of the round off. Maya Hambrick's score on beam for LSU is a 9.925. Tell they've worked so hard on these details, those leap positions in the air, much more pointed toes, much prettier pictures in the air. There's that round off into a pike double back, excellent landing. You can really see the hard work they've put in over the last few weeks. Much better performances from all of these athletes. Really, really reason to be so proud. I just love how this momentum is built from balance being on. And they're just building off of each other's performances. Really going after the best gymnastics they can do. And the crowd is enjoying it. There's more than 10,000 people in the Steg tonight. And even though there's been some instability, this program, the fans are behind them. There's no question about it. Kennedy Edney coming up after the 9-9-2-5 from Maya Hamlet. just a split second of doubt because she looked like she was very straight with being very lined up. You just, just got to hit that finish position and freeze. 
no doubt. You know, it's interesting, Georgia, they get a lineup and they stick with it throughout the year. And LSU, every week they compete for a spot in the lineup, especially this third spot. And this week, Edney earned it. They do that in an intra-squad meet the day before the competition. Completely different coaching philosophies. Okay, good oh. fight there. Just that one problem out of her, that handspring layout series. It's 10,050 in the Stegman Coliseum tonight. Another sellout crowd to support the Gym Dogs. And I think they're putting on a very nice show. This team, even though, as we mentioned, is thin in terms of depth, the quality of gymnastics that we're seeing from them is really strong, Kathy. It's what I said at the front of the show. What they want to put together is a complete meet. Do the routines that they do in practice. Vivi Bobulis had a 9-9. That brings up Sydney Sneed. Now this is Rachel Dixon, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> My bad. Right double back. Look at the landing there. and a half to the front layout. A little bit low on the second somersault. That one should really rise a little bit higher. I can't emphasize enough how well this team is competing. Some of the teams that are ranked ahead of them will do more difficulty. We're gonna see more of the E passes, those more difficult tumbling passes to open the routine. But this is the goal of every team, to perform the routines in competition the way they do in practice. Be aggressive, fight all the way to the end, like that landing. Excellent. Nice job for the sophomore from Canton, Michigan. You can't ask for anything more from these athletes. They are doing their job. They're doing everything they've worked so hard for. And now I'm seeing the details start to show in their work. Good height, much more amplitude on the tumbling passes this week. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Well, Bart, one of my favorite things about gymnasts is how multi-talented they are. We are seeing, as Christina Desiderio takes the beam for LSU, Erin McAdeg, who led off this beam rotation, now the team photographer. It's one of her passions, so she cheers on her teammates while taking beautiful photos of them after she's already led off a rotation. Thank you, Laura. The score for Kennedy Edney was a 9-7-2-5. Desiderio, of course, the freshman from New Jersey. Beautiful flow so far in this routine. Moving really confidently. Nice position in the air on these leaps. That's a switch half. Need a little bit more complete position in that split on this switch half, but a very difficult dance move. And the dismount. Well done. Good for her. Here's a young lady whose family is full of Alabama fans. And her dad, in, play, in fact, played football at Alabama. So they weren't too thrilled when she committed to LSU. That was an oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but she is starting off so well. Freshman with nerves of steel. Really attacked this beam routine. Excellent job. Speaking of excellent jobs, Georgia doing a nice job over on floor. Rachel Dixon, her score is in as a 9.95. Vivi Bobulis before her, a 9.9. Sydney Sneed scored a perfect 10, first of her career. And the first perfect 10 in the Steg since Courtney Kupetz Carter did it back in 2009. It was a beautiful moment. She was just so on. Every single tumbling pass, perfectly stuck. Whip back, through to a tuck double back. Good control so far. 
looks exactly the way it did last week. Even though Georgia trails LSU, they are on track for perhaps a team high score. If they average nine eight or above in the final two gymnasts, they will get a season high in front of a home crowd. Always a proud, pleasing skill, the Shushanova to a prone drop. You can do one of those in your routine. One more double back. This time, height. Oh, chest is down. Just a little bit low. They're going to have to take a little deduction for the low chest. Sydney Sneed from Raleigh, North Carolina. Her mother, by the way, was a cheerleader at NC State. Her father played baseball at NC State. In fact, played in the minor leagues for the Cincinnati Reds. There's a whip back. Through to a tuck double back. Good height. That's the kind of control the judges look for. You land with control on two feet before you step into the lunge. There is that dynamic duo of coaches, Courtney Kupetz carter the head coach, and Suzanne Yachlin, who in her 26 years led Georgia to 10 NCAA championships in five in a row, finishing up her iconic career back in 2009. Reagan Campbell coming after Christina Desiderio's 9-9 for LSU. Two freshmen in the lineup, back to back. Kathy, that's a good point. We've talked about how good LSU has been recently, but this is a completely different team than a year ago. We're not seeing Ashley Nat and people like that who are such great contributors. And we wondered what that would do in terms of their potential to get back to the Super Six Finals. and Fans will remember Sydney Ewing and Shay Zamardi. They were such solid contributors last year. Ashley Nat here as a volunteer assistant student coach on the sidelines, working particularly with the beam team. Well, so far, they have a pretty nice patchwork quilt that they have put together, and these two freshmen going back to back in the beam lineup. Nice difficulty there with that switch half. I see a little bit of nerves creeping up. You can see it in her face. She needs to breathe, relax, yet stay aggressive, and focus throughout. Great landing on the double twist. This is the judge's view. We're right over their shoulder, standing back tuck into a split jump. She's just barely in that full split. You really have to go beyond split for the human eye to register that, but this was spot on. Little legs crossing in the air, but we're looking at it in slow motion. <laughs> and a hug from veteran coach Dee Dee Bro in her 41st season. All right, this is always a highlight. Sabrina Vega on the floor now. Russell Warfield has done all of the choreography for George on their floor routine, and he outdid himself with this. Well, he's got a lot to work with because uh, she is all sass, isn't she, Kathy? She's sass and more. Bounced back just a little bit, but she finessed it so beautifully, went right into the dance. Sydney Sneed had a 9.85. Georgia has two 9.85s, a 9.9 and a 9.95. I love her musicality, the way she emphasizes the notes, knows exactly what to do with her eyes, her expression. She milks the music. 
music and the choreography. She has a gold medal with the U.S. national team in the 2011 World Championship, so she has extensive elite experience. All she needs is a good landing here. Very well done on double back. Great performance. I just love the choreography, the music, the performance, everything. The sophomore from Carmel, New York. Originally coached by Teodora Ungrianu and Sorin Chepoy, the famous Romanian couple, and then later on moved to the Great America Gymnastics Express in Blue Springs, Missouri for her club training. <laughs> One beautiful routine to the next. Sarah Fithingen is as lovely on beam as Sabrina Vega is on floor exercise. Regan Campbell score is in at 9.85. LSU solid here. It's five solid routines, but this is always a highlight. Look how high she goes up on toe. Oh, little rushed. I, she rushed into that layout step out. She had a 39.775 in the all-around last week, including a 9.975 on this event. Do you see how you can see the full split? Even in real time, it's because she goes beyond in an over-split. Side somersault. My guess is LSU didn't choose this music for background. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> seem like balance beam music to me, but she handled it <laughs> just beautifully. So six hit routines for the LSU Tigers here in Athens uh, on this, the beam. This position in the air is, is to die for. That is picture perfect. And after a very difficult E dance skill, the switch half legs perfectly together toes perfectly pointed and no movement of the feet. As we noted, Georgia only five people on floor and Sabrina Vega got a well-deserved 995. So a 99 and two 995s for Georgia in an impressive outing here in front of an adoring home crowd here at the Steg. The final score coming in for Sarah Finnegan, a 9.95 on beam for LSU. So LSU will get a 197.575. And it looks like although Georgia had an outstanding meet, they will finish just short of their season high. But an uplifting performance for the gym dogs in front of this crowd. A great night of gymnastics in the SEC, and we're not done because Auburn and Alabama are coming up later. We'll be right back. Presented by Belt, the home of modern Southern style, an official retail department store of the SEC. So LSU gets the win tonight here, the first time in a dual meet in Athens, Georgia since 1983 their 31st time in a row over 197. So it's 197.575 for the LSU Tigers and the second highest score of the season for Georgia in their losing effort. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. All right, thanks, Bart. 1983 was the last time that LSU won here in a dual meet. Uh, none of us were born at that point. But anyway, let's talk about tonight. This is your third meet in seven days, Maya. And you talked about the focus of this team going in. What allowed you to stay focused tonight? Um, I mean, we really, like I said earlier, we talked about just staying focused, um, you know, controlling what we can control. And that really is just how focused you are and how you bring the energy in the meet. And I think we did a good job of doing that the whole way through. So I'm proud of us. I mean, yeah, a road win's always a great win, especially at SEC. So everything, I mean, we're happy, yeah. So, Lexi, you had a career-high 995 on the floor. You've had six surgeries, right? It's incredible what you've gone through to get to this point. What is it like to make these milestones as a gymnast still competing so strong? It's so fun. You know, every opportunity I have to go out there and compete for the best university out there, um, it's just another step in the direction that this team wants to go in for myself. Um, but I just go out there every time, and, you know, I do it for the team because they're always there to support me, and I just want to give it back to them. 
Maya, you're from Temple, Georgia, what, about two hours away from here? You had, like, a bunch of cheering sections in this place. I think I even saw a fat head at one point. Do you know where that came from or what's the deal with that? Yeah. No. I'm sure my mom brought it or sister or something. I have a sister who's really into, like, art, so I'm sure she probably made it, like, by hand. So I don't know. I haven't seen him yet, but I'll ask when I see him for sure. We will get to the bottom of this breaking story. Where did Maya's fat head originate? Congratulations, ladies. We'll get it back to Bart. All right. Thank you, Laura. That was another exciting night of gymnastics in the SEC. A sellout crowd once again. Collegiate gymnastics on the upswing. Kathy Johnson-Clark, your impression of this night? I call it a win-win. I think both of these teams wins. Of course, LSU got the meet. But Georgia came up huge, especially on balance beam and floor exercise. They have a lot of things to be excited about. Courtney Kupetz Carter in her first season at Georgia doing a nice job. And DD Bros LSU Tigers undefeated in the SEC. Well, coming up next, more Friday Night Heights as Alabama takes on Auburn. For Kathy Johnson Clark, Laura Rutledge, and our entire crew, I'm Bart Connor. So long from Athens. Let's now send it to Auburn. <laughs>